Welcome back to the Lame Average Techies. Today I'm going to show you how to set up SourceNet on a Juniper SRX. So if we have a look at our lab here, you can see that we have a client PC connecting to a customer site. The IP address in use is 192.168.1.10. And then we have a public address connecting our SRX to the rest of the internet. Now, please note that this is simulated. This is just in the lab, but this will show you the exact function of SourceNet on a Juniper SRX. So the objective of this lab would be for this PC with an IP address of 192.168.1.10 to be able to reach Google's DNS, which has an IP of a.a.a.8. So the reason why you would need SourceNet is because the internet situated on this side is not aware of any private addresses. That's why you get multiple users that have the same subnets used at home, 192.168.1.0 or 0.0, .0 uh, 10.10.10 or 172.16. Those are very popular subnets for home users. But the issue is that the internet only consists of public addresses. So therefore it would not be able to route to a private address. So how we go about addressing that is to enable SourceNet. So there are multiple options for SourceNet on a Juniper SRX. And the one we're going to discuss in today's video is SourceNet interface. What that basically means is that all traffic originating from this subnet or from this PC in this example, destined for 8888 would be natted to look like it's coming from an address in this subnet. Now to demonstrate the issue, I'm going to log on to this PC quickly and we can just run a normal ping. We're going to try and ping a.a.a.8 and you'll see we probably won't get a response and it's timing out. Now if we do a trace route to a.a.a.8, we just do a minus D not to include name lookups, trace route a.a.a.8. This will show us all the hops in between. So you can see that it reaches 192.168.1.1, which is the gateway configured on this switch. Then it reaches 10.10.10.2, which is the SRX inside interface. We have 10.10.10.1 configured here and 10.10.10.2 configured here. And that is basically where our trace route stops. So digging a little deeper, what we can do is we can actually do a packet capture using Wireshark. I'm going to capture packets on the E0 interface, which is this interface connecting to the server here. We're going to open Wireshark. And if we now go back to our PC, if we do a ping to 8888, we should be able to see some packets come in. I'm going to stop the ping right there. So you can see that it's coming in with a source of 192.168.1.10 and the destination is 8.8.8.8. That is correct. Then you can see that 8.8.8.8 is trying to reply to 192.168.1.10. Now, as we explained earlier, the internet is not aware of any private addresses. So obviously this packet is being lost in transit. The internet is aware of all public addresses and this 196.1.1.0 slash 30 address is a public address. So what we'll do is we'll configure SourceNet so that it looks like it's coming from this address. How do we do that? So we're just going to log on to the SRX here quickly. I already have it open. So if we have a look at our SRX config here, so just to show configuration display set, you can see that we have a security policy allowing traffic from inside to zone internet, and we are just allowing everything. This is just to make it easier in the lab. Obviously in your deployment, you'll have more specific source addresses and destination addresses defined, but this is just to allow any traffic originating from inside, which would be our private subnet, to zone internet, which would be our public subnet. I also have a static route for 192.168.0.0 slash 16. Now 192.168.1.0 slash 24 falls under the subnet. And we have a next stop of 10.10.10.1, which is the switch over here. Then we also have a static route 0 slash 0. Next stop 196.1.1.2, which is this switch here. So just to make sure that it's not our security policies blocking any traffic, what we can do is we can do a continuous ping here, minus T. And on the SRX, you can actually do a show security flow session and you specify the destination prefix. And we're just gonna type in 8.8.8.8. So now you can see the traffic is coming in on 192.168.1.10. It is destined for 8.8.8.8. It's ICMP. 
and we are sending one packet. But you can see that 8888 is trying to reply to 192.168.1.10 also via ICMP, but we are receiving zero packets. From our Wireshark, we can actually see that we are trying to send the packet. We can see that this is the reply. Let's just stop that there. You can see that it is a reply. So, you, so we are definitely sending traffic from this PC here back to this PC, but it's not reaching. Now, if we have a look at our internet router here, we can just do a show configuration, display set again. You can see that we only have a route for 196.0.0.0 slash eight. So no private addresses fall under this subnet. So we do not have a route for 192.168.1.0 slash 24. And that is typically what you would see on internet routers anyway. They only have routes to the public address space. All right, so if we go to our SRX here, what we need to do is we need to configure source NAT. So we're just going to edit. Let me go edit security NAT source. Now you need to define a rule set. So you set a rule set and you can do a question mark and yeah, you just need to define a name. So just make this name easily identifiable for yourself. So I'm just gonna name it source NAT public. And so here yeah, we are going to define a from zone and a to zone. So looking at our uh, config here, we have a security zone inside and a security zone internet, All right? So we're going to say that it is from zone inside. Then we are going to say it is to zone outside or internet, All right? And you do a show so we can just go back into edit rule set source and now we're going to configure individual rules that fall under this rule set for this example we only need one rule so i'm going to name it rule internet uh, whoops typo so we're going to set rule internet match source address another typo source address and yeah we're going to specify our private address 1681.0/24 that is correct now we need to define a destination address here you can just type in 0/0 and now you're going to specify an action then source net interface all right so let's just go back up into source net and we do a show all right so what are we doing here so we've got a rule set configured named source net public we are saying that it is traffic from zone inside, traffic destined to zone internet. Then we have one rule that will match certain criteria. So in our internet rule, we have a match source address of 192.168.1.0/24. Remember that is this PCM, and our destination address is 0/0. So that just includes all IPs, and 8.8.8.8 will fall under that subnet. What are we going to do then? We are going to source net interface. Now, if we go look at our interfaces, we do a show. Traffic will then look like it's coming from this interface. The reason for that is you need to understand the flow. Remember, this is ingress on the SRX and that is egress on the SRX and source net will always take place on the egress interface if you configure source net interface. So in this case, it would be 196.1.1.1 slash 30. Right now we can just go top and do a commit and we should see our ping starting to respond. And there you go. Okay, so we just restarted our ping and now we're going to go back to our Wireshark capture. We, yeah, we can just uh, stop, we can scroll all the way to the top again. So here you can see the traffic is sourcing from 196.1.1.1 destined for 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.8.8 is replying to 196.1.1.1. This is basically just confirmation that our source net is working. So if we have a look back at our diagram here, traffic from 192.168.1.10 would go to this 192.168.1.1 gateway. It would then go to the SRX that has an IP of 10.10.10.2. .10 now, here is where the NAT happens. Between these devices here, the source IP always stayed 192.168.1.10. Once it reached here, this interface still saw the source address as 192.168.1.10. Without the NAT enabled, 
even this device here saw the source address as 192.168.1.10. Now that is how basic networking works. If there's no NATs happening anywhere in the network, the source address and the destination address will always stay the same. So now we introduced a NAT and we do a source NAT interface. And now we are NATing the traffic so that it looks like the traffic is coming from 196.1.1.1. So traffic leaves the SRX towards this switch here. It's being sent to a.a.a.8. a.a.a.8 sees the traffic as originating from 196.1.1.1 and it sends the traffic back to the SRX. Because the natting happens on the SRX, it has all the info it needs in its session table and it will then be able to send the traffic back to 192.168.1.10. Just one note on the SRX config here. If we go into top edit security, just do a show pipe display set. And natting on a Juniper SRX is completely separate from the security policies. That is something that you need to keep in mind. Uh, there are other videos coming up with other vendors where source NAT is actually defined in the security policy. On the Juniper, it is completely separate. You first need to configure your security policy to allow the traffic and then you need to configure your NAT. All right, and that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and as always, hope to see you guys in the next one.